Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Whatever. Hey, welcome to the program. How you doing? It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. I want you to relax. I'm going to take it from here. You've talked enough. This is fun. Hey, I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. That was a while ago, perhaps, or it could be today. I really don't know. It's hard to tell. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope nobody at the uh, dinner table, at the Thanksgiving table of festivities, hope nobody talked politics. Oh, my God, that would have caused trouble and some personal injuries. Everybody is so split and so cemented into what, where they are, what camp they're in. I'm in the camp of hell. Uh, I can't imagine if I had anybody in my family who was a you-know-what supporter. Hasn't happened, but I know some families where that is the case, and I just hope for the very best that you survive, because this is just awful. Speaking of uh, the White House, um, the guy who pretends to be president is making a decision, uh, or made one, about uh, turkeys. Every, uh, <laughs> I'm talking about Congress, uh, every year the uh, so-called president of the United States, air quotes, uh, they, they deliver two very good-looking turkeys to the White House. They dress them up, they make them look really nice, and they wash their feathers and everything. They still have those waddles, you know, just like my grandmother did when she turned 80. That's nasty. My grandfather had it when he was 70, so that's not, uh, it's not a sexist comment, at least. Uh, they're, they're very ugly animals, um, and the president, uh, Trump, has to decide um, which one he's going to pardon and which one is going to be cooked and served and, and and chewed up and chopped up. It's the same decision he has to make with Giuliani. <laughs> I love that joke. I didn't tell it during rehearsal. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's happening, man. That's uh, that that's happening. Uh, it's like Sophie's Choice. Did you ever see that movie, Sophie's Choice? There's this woman named Sophie. And she has to decide uh, between her two children. One of them uh, will live and one of them will uh, perish. And she has to make that decision. Uh, it's a holiday feel-good movie. If you're looking to uh, just sit back with some popcorn and laugh, it's uh, it's horrible. It's a horrible. I don't. You know why do they make why do they make me watch things like that? Isn't life cruel enough that I <laughs> that I don't have to go to a movie theater in the dark, put my feet up on a lounge chair, and watch a woman decide which child is is going to be demolished? I mean, seriously, good times? No. What are we watching that for? What's going on with that? Hey, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's the end of that one. Uh, I, I saw a, a news uh, thing of uh, the Patriots, New England Patriots, uh, serving, doing charity work, serving uh, poor people who are not going to be getting a Thanksgiving meal. For some reason, they always congregate in auditoriums and gyms. And the Patriots come walking in with uh, turkeys, and it's, it's, it's lovely. It's just lovely. It's wonderful. It's what Thanksgiving is all about. And then the cameras focus on the door, and through these doors comes Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, uh, carrying a, a gigantic uh, a container bucket of, uh, of stuffing. And I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Robert, I, just, I cannot see you walk into a room not picturing you naked with... <laughs> with your directional compass sticking out. I just, I can't, I can't. Ever since you you were caught in Miami, and it was you, it was you, Robert. You're caught in Miami lying on the back, on your back on a massage table with some strange woman who couldn't speak English uh, satisfying you, uh, and you uh, willingly accepting this. And uh, I just, I can't, Robert. I just can't, I can't get that out of my head. You walking through a door with stuffing, I can only see you naked now. <laughs> like, sorry, man. I got to see this video. Sophie's Choice, difficult to watch. Robert Kraft, naked on a table, video. Difficult to watch, but worth the money. 
So I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. I love football, but not like that. How are you? Uh, how's everything? Why are my arms outstretched like that? I don't know. I did an interview this week on the radio show with uh, one of the vice presidents of Airbnb, which I always thought was an airline to Honduras. I used that joke before. Nobody laughed then either. And uh, it's, uh, ick. It, you know what? I can't. It's the same thing as the Uber. I've talked about this on the show before. I cannot get into a stranger's car, and I don't want strangers in my car, so the Uber thing is not going to work. Just because you put a sticker on your back windshield that says Uber, doesn't mean that you're a good person. Um, I, I don't know what you did in the back of that car, what people have sat there. Why would you want a smelly person sitting in the back seat of your car to the point where you can't even get the thing detailed anymore, like that Seinfeld episode? And it's the same with Airbnb. Why would you have a stranger stay in your bedroom, in your house, in your guest room, I, I, once they close the door, what are they doing on your bed? Oh, my God. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, what if Robert Kraft wanted to, to stay at your house? Ugh. Still can't get that image out of my head. I'm sorry. Uh, and I wouldn't stay in somebody's house. I mean, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, I, I, I hear the doors rattle, and somebody's at the door with a large butcher knife. I mean, seriously, man, I don't. I don't know these people. Welcome to my home. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Airbnb. I don't even know what that means. I know B&B &B is bed and breakfast. The air thing, I'm really, I don't, I don't understand what that's about. I, th I thought it was an air mattress being used. Maybe originally it was. Maybe you brought an air mattress with you when you, you stayed in somebody's uh, um, bathroom. I have no idea. Can set up your mattress in the tub. Have a good night. Ten bucks. I have no idea how this evolved, but uh, I'm not into it. I'm not into that. I'm not into food delivery services. I discussed that last week on the program in depth in our seminar se section of the program, where uh, I do not want uh, my food that I'm going to put in my mouth delivered by some pimply kid who's still oozing. I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing it, man. I'm not. I'm not having the food that I'm going to put into my cavity, uh, sitting on the back seat of your car, not knowing like what you did to it. You could, you could sprinkle arsenic on it. I really don't know what you're doing. I don't know who you are. Food delivery service. What are you professional? No, no, no. You hardly have a driver's license. What are you talking about? And you're delivering food to me. I don't trust you. I'm not that hungry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that hungry that I can't pick up my own food. Show's almost over. Don't don't go crazy. It's not a big deal. Everything's going to be fine. This is a time of year where we get a little soft in the pants. You know what I'm saying? This is, oh, 20 minutes to go? Or we've elapsed 20 minutes? Oh, my God. This is bad news for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is a time of year where we all get uh, soft about uh, charities. And it's a good thing to donate to. It's a good thing to uh, to donate to various. No, I, I thought uh, I thought I heard something in the hallway. See, every once in a while here at these studios, they have tours. That's how they pay for the equipment. <laughs> they have tours. If you ever want a tour uh, of the studios here, just uh, call them. I don't know the phone number. I don't even know what town I'm in. Call them up and say I want to do the tour. Uh, and uh, you can do the tour. It's fascinating. It's only like a hundred bucks, and they'll show you everything. And I mean everything. Anyway, uh, so uh, people tend to donate, but be very careful because we get telemarketing calls all the time from all these organizations, but you don't know if it's really them because they steal phone numbers and they steal caller IDs, and you don't know who it is. Never give your information over the phone to somebody who says, oh, yes, I'm with the, uh, the, the March of Dimes, and um, I'm, uh, I'm here to, would you like to donate? Oh, sure, okay, give me your credit card number and that code, and uh, I'll send you a letter from Bermuda. You know, come on, man, you know, don't do that. If you want to donate, then you contact them, and then you make your donation. Never do it when, when a stranger's con. no matter how... 
how lovely the robot sounds. I mean, do you know the difference between a real person and a robot by now? I know the technology is amazing, but at the same time, I think I can still tell the difference. And I am, I am always insulted when I get a, a robot calling me, having conversation with me. I mean, it's just, it's so demeaning that I'm a human being and I'm, I'm talking to a robot who's trying to solicit something from me. It's like, wow, this is about as embarrassing as it gets. So I don't do that. I just hang up immediately. Or if it's somebody I know, I also hang up immediately, but that's besides the point. If you're going to donate, you initiate the call, you initi initiate the contact. Uh, that's the way to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm just trying to help you along, that's all. I get uh, March of Dimes sends me still, uh, about once every three months, sends me an envelope. And in the envelope, it's saying, won't you help? And inside the envelope it is a dime. And... Uh, and I constantly, and I, 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 I want to help, but I can't because their marketing is just so embarrassingly horrific. I can't do it. If they didn't send everybody free dimes across the country, they'd have probably a million dollars. But instead, in order to raise money, you do the guilt thing on me. You, you pull the guilt thing. And nobody pulls the guilt thing on me, uh, not even my mother anymore. Nobody pulls that crap on me. Well, here's a dime. I sent you a dime. Oh, my God. Can you at least send it back? No. Thanks for the dime. You're stupid. Now, I know this is nasty to say about charities, but it is the stupidest marketing I've ever heard. It really is. Keep your dime. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I also get calls sound like a terrible person. I'm really not. I'm trying to entertain you. <laughs> and in doing so, I have to be a little bit above the top and theatrical and all that stuff, but I'm usually not like that. I also get calls from uh, that uh, WGBH thing, the public television, and I do watch some of their shows. Well, I shouldn't say I watch their shows. I try to watch their shows. I watch like maybe eight to nine minutes of it, and then I watch a one-hour commercial. And no matter how much I donate, no matter how much anybody else donates, I can't watch a, a, a damn show that's full with, <laughs> without it stopping and seeing a couple of people begging for money from me. I mean, I, I get it, I get it, but it's just, it's just annoying. They contact me because I did donate to them because I think their programming is, is, is wonderful, except for the fact that they, they're interrupting it all the time. But I do donate, and ever since then, oh my God, don't donate because they will be on your butt forever. And every time they call, I speak up and I say, look, you know, why don't you bother somebody who hasn't donated yet? I donated to you. I did my thing. I helped you out. Why are you coming back at me again? You know what you're like? You're like this annoying friend who says, well, can I borrow 10 bucks? Sure, here's, here's 10 bucks. I don't even need it back. You don't even need to pay me back. Thank you very much. A month later, it's that friend again, quote unquote. Now, Ron, um, things are so bad. Things are so bad. I, 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 I have a speeding ticket, and now they want 140 bucks. And I just, can I borrow like 20 bucks? So no, this is this is ridiculous. Now this is the same thing as what these charities do to me, and it, it's it's annoying. It's like, didn't I just give you money? Now they're calling up, and they're saying, Ron. Would you like to start a payment plan with us? What, do I owe you money now? What, a payment plan? What are you talking, did I buy a couch from you? What are you talking about? Yeah, see, uh, well, give us your credit card number, your checking account number, okay? And what we'll do is we'll take like $20 out every month, um, depending on how much we need. Um, maybe we'll take 30 or 40, I really don't know. <laughs> give us all your financial money, uh, uh, all your accounts, list them, please, and then how we can get things out of it. And uh, we'll just, we don't want to bother you. We don't want to bother you every month by calling you up and begging for money because we don't like to do that. So let us just take command of your checkbook and, and, and your savings account. 401k, do you have that? Can we, can we take like a little bit of money out of that every year? God. Are you serious? What are you kidding me? You, 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 no, no. 
No. I don't care how many tote bags I get. I'm up to here with tote bags. Call Robert Kraft. He's got money. And stuffing. <laughs> uh... Again, I, I don't want to sound uh, like a, a nasty, uh, uncaring person, but I happen to be a nasty, uncaring person. So uh, yeah, I'm the guy who, if you step on my lawn, I'll, I'll come after you with a rake. That's me. That's me. It's <laughs> There's pictures of me all over the Internet. <laughs> eh, eh, God. Oh, my God. I'm still full. I'm still full from Thanksgiving, you know, I really am, assuming that already happened. I'm so full from Thanksgiving. Um, I, I know you want help moving, but I have too much on my plate. I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I know you, I, you want me to drive you to the airport? I've, I've got so much on my plate. I've, I've got green beans and uh, oh, God, green bean casserole, and uh, I got some more turkey. Kraft bought stuffing over. I mean, I got so much on my plate. I can't drive you to the airport. I really can't. I got to tell you, if I didn't even have a plate, I still wouldn't drive you to the airport. That's the definition of a good friend. Would you be willing to drive him to the airport? The answer is no. Uh, help them move? <laughs> That's all. That's actually funny. That's actually very, very funny. I, I wouldn't help myself move, okay? I should have moved by now, but I don't want to help myself. So that's the problem there. If you watch uh, HGTV, Home and Garden Television, it's very, very entertaining. But it makes me sad. I'll tell you why it makes me sad. There used to be a show on it called uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Do you remember that? Robin Leach, the guy with the British accent, I could never understand him. He would take me on tours of mansions on, this, uh, on the TV. And basically what was happening is they were, uh, there was a television show about stuff you'll never have. Um, all these people have these gigantic mansions. You don't, you suck. That's pretty much what that show was about. I didn't like it for that. As fascinating as it was, it made me feel not great about myself. Well, now uh, when I watch Home and Garden Television, they have these shows like House Hunters and that kind of thing where these young couples who apparently uh, th their decision-making process is weird no, I'm, I don't want that house. Why, why I can't buy that house? It's uh, the, 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 the backsplash in the kitchen is, is the wrong color. I can't buy this house. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you people? What is, what is wrong with you? <sighs> anyway, so I'm, I'm watching uh, the house hunter thing, and, uh, and I'm seeing that these gigantic houses, 3,500 square feet, 4,000 square feet, nine bedrooms, 16 bathrooms, beautiful houses that you think you were a king and a queen in a palace. And then, uh, and then they say, and then the, the couple says, well, uh, the real estate is, guess how much you think this house is? They say, oh, I don't know, $7 million, $20 million. No, it's 430000 Well, wh what? What? Wait a minute. Where is this? You find out it's like in Alabama or something where the river is actually rising as they speak, <laughs> about to flood their, their, their basement. I, I, I don't know. Or, or the house across the street is, is a shack, and, and the owner of the property is, is named Zeke. I, you know, <laughs> in Massachusetts, where I live, I don't know where you live, but in Massachusetts, where I live, things are a little bit expensive. And to have a 4,000-square-foot home, you're talking about the million-dollar area, at least. Um, but apparently, on the Home and Garden television show, <laughs> these things are... <laughs> I'll, I'll take two. I'll take two of those houses, please. <laughs> what? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. They're living in these mansions, and I'm sitting up here, uh, you know, and I'm... I'm, I'm I'm upset that they're going to build a school in Easton, you know, and I, <laughs> what am I going to do? How am I going to eat? The property tax is, uh, is incredible. It's just, uh, I pay more a year in property tax uh, than I did for my first prostitute. It's, it's that much, Robert Graft. 
<laughs> no, it's a lot of money. It's a lot. I could buy a car every year for the amount that I pay in property taxes. And that's no lie. That's sad. Well, not a great car, but, you know, a car. Let's put it to you that way. We've probably gone over here. Uh, we're probably like 10 minutes too long on this show. Let's check it out. Oh, not quite. Not quite. But we're getting there. So uh, enjoy the rest of the show while you can, because it's going to be ending in about eight minutes. And when it does, it won't be on anymore. So <laughs> you better enjoy this. I went to a market basket just this morning. I don't know if you know this, but <laughs> we're taping this uh, the day before Thanksgiving, 2019. And... Uh, uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, Market Basket opens at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's a little-known fact. Sometimes they'll announce it over the speaker when you're in the supermarket later in the day. Sometimes they won't. But I know it's open at 6 in the morning. This is exciting for me. Being in a supermarket at 6 o'clock in the morning is like going to Disney World and not waiting online to go on the rides. It's unbelievable. Especially, have you ever, you've been in, in Market Basket probably, um, I know you probably left with injuries and things like that, but it's quite an experience. When you go in six in the morning on these specific days, it's, uh, it's, there's nobody there. It's me and three other people that heard the announcement. It's, the whole place is to yourself. And you can choose a great shopping cart. There is nothing like pulling out a shopping cart randomly from the long row of connected shopping carts, and you pull one out, and you start to push it, and it makes no noise at all. It glides quietly. Oh, my God, it's like life is paying you back for all the good things you've done. And you're going down the aisles, and you're feeling good because the, 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 the cart is so smooth. There's nobody in your way. You don't have to stop the cart and go, excuse me. You don't have to, there's nobody there. You want something from the deli? Take it yourself. I mean, there's, don't, don't bother with numbers. There's nobody else standing there. It was such a wonderful experience. It's like going to Space Mountain and walking right into the coaster. You know what I'm saying? That happened to me this morning, and it made my day really wonderful. And <sighs> anyway, uh, <laughs> because I mean, when it's Thanksgiving, that, that's my prime time for for shop. I shop every day. I go to the supermarket every single day. Sometimes I'll just eat it right there, uh, even before I I pay for it. They don't even know I bought it. <laughs> they have no idea. It's crazy, man. I'm telling you, the holidays are great. You know. That's when all the people come over to your house who you hate so much you would never invite them otherwise. You see them once a year and then you realize why. I did this bit last week, but I didn't remember that I did it when I started talking about it, so now I'm stuck. I'm going to move on. <laughs> I have a friend who has a British accent. Apparently, I don't know if he's from Australia or from Ireland or from England, because they all vaguely sound the same. The only reason I know uh, that somebody came from Scotland and still sounds a little bit British is that I can't understand a word they're saying. I could never understand a Scottish accent at all. I know they're talking, I know it's English, but I have no idea what they're saying at all. I have a friend who, uh, a friend, uh, an acquaintance, uh, who is, who's British, and it's just amazing how sounds so intelligent. I mean, I know him, and he's not intelligent at all, but the accent makes him sound so intelligent. Uh, I don't like Shakespeare, because, uh, again, I know the words are being said, but I don't understand what the hell you're saying. Nothing makes sense coming out of your mouth, but I know there are words that I should be understanding. It's just when you string them along with these other words, I don't know what you're talking about. But it's... Uh, and I. I don't know if that's just Shakespeare or whether people really talk like that. I really don't know. 
because they use that Shakespearean dialect for medieval times as well. But I don't know if that's the way they talked in medieval times, or were they just, or did they talk like we do, or like I do, not you? I don't know. I mean, did the king say, be off with their heads and do not realm into my consequence without knowing and kneeling and feeling that uh, the, the royals will be headed? Or, or uh, did they talk like that? Like no one knew what they were talking about? They just put like words together and had pauses? Or did they talk normally like, uh, Bob, um, get on the horse, uh, go go fetch some water for me. I'm, I'm so damn thirsty. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been hell in here lately. Can we get this castle cleaned? I mean, did they talk like that? I don't think they did. I'm not sure. I wasn't there. And if you watch these movies about medieval times, they were living with dinosaurs, and they were living with these flying uh, pterodactyls and things like that. It's like, whoa, I don't, you, you people are, I don't think you quite understand what's going on. I know in the Bible there is a, there is a passage where uh, uh, Jesus is uh, leading the people. Um, by the way, it, Jesus and Moses must have done tour groups because they're always walking through the desert wearing sandals. I, I, things must have been incredible back then. You could walk through the desert and these, these burning bushes would talk to you and give you, an, uh, give you tablets with instructions on them. Um, waters would part so that you could like, get to the other side easily. Uh, this is before they had ferries. Uh, some people were turning water into wine. Uh, these miracles were occurring. Some people were actually giving birth without, without having any sex whatsoever. Um, babies were found floating down rivers. I was like crazy back then. Things were crazy. Uh, people would, would uh, they'd be hearing voices like, hey, get two of every animal and build a boat. We're going to have a flood. Who are you? Uh, but they do it anyway. It's just crazy stuff going on. It must have been nuts back then. A lot, a lot of stuff happening in the desert. A lot of things, pterodactyls and bloody creatures. And it's just crazy, man. Roman Empire, what's up with that, man? Just chill, chill a little bit. So power hungry. What reminds me of the Roman Empire? Let's see. Trump administration? Yeah, okay. That's close. That's close. I get it now. Well, we're down to uh, an hour and 20 minutes. So, oh, I'm sorry, minute and 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm not doing Black Friday, by the way. No, that's very depressing. Very, very depressing. Just, uh, that's, that's mankind uh, uh, turning against itself. Uh, in order to pick up some toys or, or TV, it's just, it's an awful, it's an awful example of, of, of mankind. The only development civilization has had over these many, many years is uh, nothing. It's just that we're, we're walking upright. And uh, at my age, uh, most people I know, they're not even walking upright. They have walkers. So uh, no advancement whatsoever, nothing, nothing. We're just nasty to each other. We're more nasty than we were before because now the boundaries are wider, so there's no rules, there's no regu regulations. Um, news is fake news. Uh, videos that you see are doctored uh, to make them look real. We don't know what, what is what anymore. We don't trust anybody. People are calling my house. I don't even know them. They're trying to manipulate me. Uh, things are crazy. Uh, and all we're doing is we're walking upright. That's the only advancement we've had. That's it. Actually, we're going the other direction. Here's a direction we're going to go in now. We're going to end the show. I'll see you next time. Until then, I wish you peace.